If learning the truth is the scientist's goal, then he must make himself the enemy of all that he reads. What's the matter, Leila? Mm, it's nothing, Grandad. Just sort of worried about the science class tomorrow. I have to give a demonstration. That sounds like fun. Fun. I have to explain how we see. And all I have are these diagrams, which I don't understand. I'm going to fail. I'm going to get laughed at by everyone. Ah, the quest of every true scientist. Sometimes it takes more than a few diagrams to truly understand our world. Now, let's see what we have here. One thousand years before your birth, a great civilization spread across the earth. At its center, the grand city of Baghdad did rise ruled by Khalif al-Ma'mun the wise. In his desire for peace, the Khalif believed that through acquiring knowledge, prosperity could be achieved. Thus forth, he began his epic quest to collect the world's knowledge from east to west. Ancient books from Greece, Egypt and Persia were collected. Wisdom from China, Africa and India into Arabic translated. From around the globe came many women and men of different faiths and cultures in harmony then. Across the land, they built houses of wisdom and excellence, inspiring 1,001 inventions and brilliance. For hundreds of years, working together, they learned and spread what would help change the world forever. Kaifanara. <laughs> We see because light rays reflect off objects and their image enters our eyes. Huh? Huh? Dear boy, nonsense. The great Greek scholar Euclid has taught that invisible rays shine out of our eyes and that is how we see. But I have here a, a, a manuscript uh, from the Greek scholar Aristotle. Young Ibn al-Haytham, choose your sources more wisely. <laughs> Great debates, grand theories, but where is the proof? My friend from Basra, your way to the truth will be hard. Have faith. But, uh... Debates, logic, not enough to become a true scientist. Behold! Behold, O oh seekers of the truth, behold, to the best minds of this land, I have come from the illustrious city of Cairo with a message from our ruler, Al-Hakim bi Amrillah. Our beloved Egypt is threatened by a mighty force of nature, the great River Nile. When it floods, it destroys and devastates our land. Our ruler has heard that here, in this gathering, there is a man who believes he has a monumental solution to this epic challenge. To build a giant dam across the Nile. Let this fearless scholar step forth, make himself known, and embark upon this historic task of heroic proportions. It is I, Al Hassan ibn al Haytham. Yes, I believe a dam can be built. I humbly accept this mission. Beware, my friend, beware. This is surely a path of great danger, for your life will be at the mercy of this ruler. 
Prepare yourself, fearless scholar. We have no time to waste. And so, Ibn Haytham seized the greatest challenge of the age to curb the mighty River Nile from its bouts of rampage. There are different stories as to why he failed. Some say he predicted that building a dam would flood part of the Nile, destroying many villages. But what happened to him? What did the Caliph do to him? Light rays from the moon travel in straight lines through this small hole, just like the opening at the front of the eye. And this is how we see. This room is the proof. I was right. Debates and theories were only the start. Experiments had to play their part. Here, Ibn al-Haytham discovered the truth. A dark room. And now he had proof. He wrote seven chapters in his book on optics. And how we see, some of the mysteries he perceived are still unknown to you and me. Why the moon appears small in the sky, yet seen on the horizon so large to the eye. Our leader has disappeared and is no more. Continue your quest, scientist. Along with Ibn al-Haytham's pages, 
came the Muslim world's golden ages. Where he led, others followed. New ideas were built on his wisdom borrowed. In Europe, Al-Hazin became his name. Many discoveries we know today had their beginnings in his brain. So next time, you take a photograph with that camera. Watch a movie in the cinema. Or do your homework. Remember the struggles of those scientists who came before us. In the words of Isaac Newton, if I have seen further, it is because I stand on the shoulders of giants. I wonder who those giants were. Now back to work. Dad, this is awesome! Can't wait to take this experiment to my class tomorrow and tell everyone about Ibn al them. I just remembered I also have an experiment for my maths class. Biology, chemistry and physics. So many experiments we can work on. Oh, Layla, I think our next experiment should be in the kitchen, preparing for dinner. Come.